Welcome back everybody to EET 1104-1134 class uh, for today, Wednesday, March 25th. I uh, appreciate everybody hanging in there with uh, me while I learn uh, how to record lectures. Let's continue on with uh, uh, Chapter 9 and talking about Thevenin and Norton circuits, but first let's just review some announcements uh, for the class. Uh, already made them the on the Monday lecture, but I just want to repeat. Um, you know, I've got some issues about labs. Uh, lab assignments are still required. Uh, the remainder of the labs are to be done using multi-sim, as we uh, showed in class Friday before the spring break. And we still have some students that need to do makeup labs uh, before the spring break occurred. Uh, you know, we miss some labs because of weather and other issues. Uh, we need to come up with a fair way uh, to handle these makeup labs. Um, they are required to, to still be done. Um, you know, you're welcome to perform the full labs on your own at home. Um, if you have the equipment, uh, you have your lab kits, uh, but you don't have perhaps a DC power supply. Uh, so there may be issues about uh, doing it on your own at home. Um, you know, if you're local, I may be I can probably arrange for you to uh, check out a DC power supply uh, for the rest of the semester, and uh, maybe perhaps a, a DMM if you'd like a, a second uh, digital multimeter. You know, I cannot invite you or ask you to come to class to perform the labs. Uh, uh, the campus is closed to students who are not uh, employees at the school. And of note, I'd just like to repeat that our plan is that uh, next fall, uh, some of you may be interested that uh, all courses on the EET program will be offered as distance ed online uh, in conjunction with uh, in-class lectures. Also, if you need face-to-face uh, -face, uh, time with me, you can always ask for a Zoom conference. I'm starting to, to figure out the Zoom software and getting to where I have some level of comfort with that. But otherwise, you know, again, if you have any questions or any uh, clarifications of details that need to be made, please ail me, m email me um, so we can uh, get anything taken care of in regard to any issues in regard to class or any help you may need. So here we have a, a little circuit and uh, as we can see it has a number of resistors, our favorite component. Uh, we have a voltage supply, a current supply and I would like to perform you know a Thevenin and a Norton analysis of that circuit. Typically, if we're going to do a Thevenin analysis, uh, we're going to select our load. In this case, I'm going to select this 3 ohm resistor as the load. So we're going to remove it. And in the case of a Thevenin circuit, we're going to leave that gap open and ask the question, what is the open circuit voltage across that gap to do our Thevenin analysis? And the typical tool we use to find a voltage is nodal analysis. So uh, let's take a look at that circuit and see what we need to do to perform nodal analysis for this circuit. So here we are. We're going to do nodal analysis. I've pulled out that 3 ohm resistor. We're going to ask for that open circuit voltage. So we need to draw our circles. So here we go. We've got a node here. We have a node here. And we have a node here. Now the question becomes what about this point right here? It's not really a node. Well, with nodal analysis, we've got a couple of options. We can go ahead and define this as a node if we want to, which is legal. Or we might notice 
this would be the preferred option, the easiest option, that there is no current through this 2 ohm resistor. Now that current does not exist. So if that current does not exist, if we're going to sum currents, this is just something that would fall away anyway because it would be zero. And also since there's no current through this 2 ohm resistor, there is no voltage drop across that 2 ohm resistor. If there is no voltage drop across the 2 ohm resistor, then the voltage on this side of the resistor equals the voltage on this side of the resistor. So we can just grow our circle here just to include this whole end out here. So that simplifies things a little bit. Now we're down to a node here. A node there called V2. And this will be our zero volt reference node. Okay, everything looks good so far. We're down to two unknown nodes. And we should be able to recognize that in the end our Thevenin voltage would just simply be the voltage of this node minus the voltage of that node. So it would just be V2 minus 0. So it doesn't look too bad to find the, the Thevenin voltage doing nodal analysis. Hopefully there are no issues that pop up, but we'll see. And so since we're finding a voltage, we're going to sum currents. So we're going to sum currents for the V1 node. Well, we have a wire off to the left and down. So that would be V1 minus the nodal voltage on the other side, divided by any resistance on that wire. We've got a current in this wire. Well, that's easy we just have a one amp current I have to ask the question now is the current being absorbed into the node or is it being supplied by the node well the answer is it's being absorbed into the node so that becomes a minus one amp then we have the thing here to the right so we're going to add that current going to the right and so I got to subtract all the voltages from V1, so that's V1 minus 10 minus the next node, which is V2. And then I have to divide by the resistance on that wire. And we ask the question, what resistance? There is no resistance. So that just becomes zero. And those two currents sum up to zero. Well, it looks like we might have a problem here. We've got some stuff here divided by zero. And we should know now by our algebra curriculum that uh, when we start dividing by zero, we have issues that come up. So. I'm going to just ignore that for a while and we're going to sum the currents for that V2 node and see if we can work through this. Well I'm going to go ahead and ask the question, okay we've got this down here, now there's no current through here, we've got a current through there, so I'll go ahead and take care of that, we have V2 down this wire minus the nodal voltage on the other side which is zero divided by the resistance of four ohms. Now we look here to the left looks like we're going to have some kind of the same issues here add that current to the left, we've got V2 minus a minus 10 which we all know should turn out to be a positive 10 minus V1 over 0 equals 0 
now we've got the same issue here we've got some stuff divided by 10 we have a v1 minus divided by 0 a minus 10 divided by 0 and a minus v2 divided by 0 here we have a positive v2 divided by 0 a positive 10 divided by 0 and a minus v1 divided by 0 so we can see here that we have the you know the subtractive inverse here and here between these two equations so what the rules of algebra say is we can take these two equations and we can add them together so let's go ahead and do this we've got this term right here so we call that a super node so SN for super node that just simply means we're going to add the two nodal equations together so we've got this term v1 divided by 2 and 0 divided by 2 so that just goes away we've got a minus 1 term here then we have a plus v1 over 0 a minus 10 over 0 and a minus v2 over 0 then we've got this term down here we'll add that plus v2 over 4 then we have 0 over 4 which just goes away and then we have a plus v2 over 0 plus a 10 over 0 minus a v1 over 0 equals 0 now we've got a plus v1 over 0 and a minus v1 over 0 so they just cancel out minus 10 over 10 plus 10 over or 10 over 0 excuse me plus 10 over 0 so those two terms cancel out minus v2 over 0 plus v2 over 0 so those two terms cancel out and what we have left for our super node adding the two equations together is a v1 over 2 a minus 1 and a plus v2 over 4 all that equals zero. That looks like a much simpler equation and that is indeed true. So we'll just go ahead and do the V1 1 over 2 is 0 0.5 I'll go ahead and do the V2 term here 1 over 4 is 0 0.25 pull the minus 1 to the other side and so we have an equation that took care of this issue between V1 and V2 as far as these divide by zero terms are concerned. Now that uh, leaves us with another dilemma though and that is we have one equation because we combine these two nodal equations into one that we have two unknown terms well we have a workaround for that what we're going to do is go back to this circuit up here and we realize we eliminated this thing between the V1 and V2 nodes so anything we do with this in here is now independent of this equation so we can go back up here and ask okay is there an equation I can write well, I look here, I've got the plus sign on this side, the minus sign on that side. And so I want to write an equation that will involve V1 and V2 that is different from this equation, or what we call linearly independent. And so we have the positive sign on this side, so V1 becomes our positive term. We've got the negative sign on this side so we subtract the V2 voltage because we have V1 voltage on this side, V2 voltage on that side and so V1 minus V2 equals the voltage in between them and uh, 
that voltage in between them since we started at V1 going to V2 we'll say as we start on this side go to that side so that is equal to 10 and that is our second equation okay so now we have our system that we can develop our linear system the two variables V1 V2 equal this matrix with a value 0 0.5 here and 0 0.25 we'll take the inverse of that matrix then we have this term right here we have 1 V1 and there's 1 V2 but it's got a minus sign in front of it and then we have our constant vector for this first value we have a 1 and here we have a 10 and so we plug those values into our calculator so let me get my calculator fired up here get it into my matrix mode I just have a 2 by 2 matrix, so I go 0 0.5, enter, 0 0.25, enter, and I'm going to uh, delete that value. I can actually delete the column, and again, delete that column. Okay, so, and I guess I need to go ahead and delete those rows. Okay, sorry about that. I had to do some cleaning up on my calculator left over from the other day. So we got one there, and then we have one minus there. So I have my uh, main uh, variable matrix here with the uh, four terms in it. And I'll go ahead and uh, go to my next matrix. Okay, I've got uh, that term there, which is a 1, then we have a 10, and then I need to delete uh, that row, and delete that row again. Okay, so now I've got my matrix set up. Okay, so now I'm going to call my matrices up. There's that first one. I'm going to invert it. Call up the second matrix. And then multiply them together. And the voltages come out to 4.667 volts and minus 5.333 volts. And hopefully, you know, you worked your calculator a little bit quicker than I worked mine on that particular occasion. Because I had to do some cleaning up in my matrices. But, yeah, we have some answers now. Now, I'll go back for previously. We said V7 was equal to V2 minus, you know, that, that zero volt. Thank you. So... It'd be V2 minus 0, so V7 just is simply equal to V2. And so, now we got a Thevenin voltage now, and that is minus 5.333 volts. We've got some kind of Thevenin resistance, we don't know what it is now. We have our load resistor which I believe was 3 ohms. So now we still need to find our, our Thevenin, but I also asked for the I Norton value, so we're halfway there. Let me go ahead and leave that until I get 
the rest of my pages sorted out here. Oh, let's see. Let's let's jump in and do this. Here's today's quiz. Here are the two questions. So again, just reply to me via email. Your answer for number one, whether it's A, B, C, D. Your answer for number two, whether it's A, B, C, or D. First question, in performing a Thevenin analysis of a circuit, what do we typically do? A mesh analysis or nodal analysis? Are we finding a voltage or a current? And in question two, in performing a Norton analysis of a circuit, which one do we typically do? A mesh analysis or a nodal analysis? Are we finding a current or a voltage? No. Give me your answers for these two questions for A, B, C, or D. And then email those to me, please. And then you'll get your uh, credit for attending today's lecture. Okay. So let's go back to our circuit of today. And let's ask our question. Okay, let's... Let's find this Norton current. Well, I prefer to do mesh analysis, so here we go. There's a loop, there's a loop, and there's a loop. Give them names, I1, I2, and I3. Looks good so far. So, Let's sum the voltages for that first loop. So we've got I1 times 2 and 3, which makes a total of 5. And then we've got I2 times 0, because there's no resistor between those two. Then we have I3 times 0, because I3 doesn't even touch I1. Okay, there is no resistor here, but we have to ask the question, okay, is there something between I1 and I2? And the answer to that question is yes. There's a current supply. If we were to put a voltage meter across that current supply, would we measure a voltage? And the answer to that is yes. If this were a voltage supply and we put a current meter, would there be a current? Yes. And so the inverse is true. We've got a current supply. Is there a voltage? Yes, there's a voltage. What is it? I have no idea. Current goes up, so current leaves the positive terminal of a current supply comes back in at the negative terminal. So I follow the I1, I've got a plus sign, plus the voltage of that one amp supply, which I have no idea what it is, but I just know all those voltages equal zero. Okay, so Let's just go ahead and write our next equation for loop 2. So sum the voltages for loop 2. We've got a minus I1. Again, there's no resistor between I1 and I2. Plus I2. It's got a single 4 ohm resistor. And then we've got to subtract the I3. There's 4 ohms between I2 and I3 loop. There's a voltage supply up here. Follow the arrow direction. Let's see the plus sign first. That's a plus 10. And we've got this one amp thing again. And that's got a voltage. But I'm going to follow the arrow and say, oh, that's minus one amp. All those equal zero. Excuse me, excuse me, not minus one amp. Minus the voltage of the one amp supply. And we've got one more equation to write for the third loop. 
So that's going to give us three equations, but now I have to ask the question, how many variables do we have? We have one, two, three, four unknown values. I1, I2, I3, and the voltage of the 1 amp supply. But we only got have three equations. Well, again, the rules of algebra say we can take these two equations and add them together. And so that would be a super mesh. Super mesh just means we added two equations together. We've got I1 times 5 from the first equation up there. That's just 0. That's just 0. Then we've got a plus voltage of the 1 amp. Then we have this term here, which is just a 0. Then we've got this, I2 times 4 minus I3 times 4 for this term. A minus voltage V1. I'm going to pull this 10 over to the other side and it becomes a minus 10. So this is our new combined equation. And we've got a plus V1 plus voltage of the 1 amp and we have a minus voltage of the 1 amp. Ah, they will just cancel out. Boom, boom. And now what do we have? We have I1 times 5 plus I2 times 4 minus I3 times 4 equals minus 10. We've got a nice equation with one, two, three variable terms. Okay, so we eliminated a variable. Well, that looks good. So let's go ahead and write our third equation loop. Sum of the voltages for I3. Let's see, minus I1 times 0, minus I2 times 4, plus I3 times 4 and 2 is 6. All those currents equal 0. So we have a nice second equation. We've written all of our loop equations. We added a couple of them together to eliminate a variable. But now we still have an issue. We have one, two equations and three variables. So now, let's ask the question, is that enough equations? No, it's not. We need a third equation. And so we're going to go back to the part that we eliminated. Just as we did super node, we went back to the part that we eliminated. Now let's go back to the part we eliminated here. Is it possible to write an equation using some of the variables that we already have that doesn't repeat anything here? In other words, is it linearly independent? And the answer to that question is yes. Because since we eliminated this, we can write an equation for this because it's not in any, any of these two. It got erased. Okay, so I'm understanding next time I do this lecture, I need to turn off my email account. Okay, so we have a current supply and it's going up. I1 is going down. I2 is going up. So I want to say, well, I1 is going against it. I2 is going with it. So this third equation will be minus I1 because it's going against that current source plus I2 which is going with the current source and the t sum result of that is one amp. We've got our third equations, third equation. Okay, so what can we do? Well, we have three unknown variables: i1, i2, i3. We've got a system here with a matrix. We've got a five, a minus four and another minus four. 
and then we have a 0, a minus 4, and a 6. And then we have our third equation. How many I1s do we have? Well, we have minus 1 of them. How many I2s do we have? We have 1 of them. There aren't any I3s, so that's just a 0. And then we have our constant vector here off to the side. That first value is a minus 10. We have a 0, and then we have a 1. Again, it's time to break out the calculating machine. And uh, we'll go ahead and clear that out. And so, and we'll call it my matrices here. I've got a 3x3, three three, and this one down here is already set up for a 3x3, three three, so I don't have to do all the gyrations that I did last time. Okay, so I have my matrix set up. I'm going to verify the values before I go on. Make sure I got the minus signs where they need to be, and etc. And that looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the my constant vector. And that first value is a minus 10. Well, that's already taken care of. Zero, and then we got a one there. So I've got a minus 10, 0, 1. That looks good. So I go back and call up my first matrix, which is that one. Find the inverse of it. Call up the second one. Multiply them together. And here are the answers. I1 is 2 amps. I2 is 3 amps and I3 is 2 amps. So I1 comes out to 2 amps, I2 comes out to 3 amps, and I4 comes out to 2 amps. So then we go back to this and I ask the question, okay, what is I Norton? Well, I Norton is the current circulating out here, which happens to be I3. So I Norton equals I3. I Norton equals 2 amps. So we want to build our Norton circuit. We've got a positive 2 amps. We've got our little 3 ohm load here. And then I've got a resistance here that goes in the middle. We call our Norton. Now we got the same issue here. We have a resistance here in series. It's the R-thevenin, and we hopefully know by now that R-thevenin equals R-Norton, which is equal to V-thevenin over I-Norton. So, R-Norton is simply equal to V-thevenin, which, which turned out to be minus 5.33 volts. Well, we're finding a resistance, so it doesn't matter if the voltage is positive or negative. And since we don't want any negative resistance, we just take the absolute value of it and divide it by the Norton current, which was 2 amps. So 5.333 entered by, divided by 2 gives us an R Norton equals R Thevenin resistance of about 2.67 ohms. So the Norton circuit is now complete. That is 2.67 ohms. The Thevenin circuit is now complete. Oops. The Thevenin circuit is complete. 2.67 ohms. The Norton circuit is complete with 2.67 ohms. So now we have our Norton simplified circuit, and we have our Thevenin simplified circuit. Okay. Hopefully, this is another good exercise for you. Uh, and that being able to do some Thevenin and Norton circuit analysis. Again, if you have any questions, please uh, contact me through email. And then uh, 